A particle of mass m originally is at rest is subjected to a force whose direction is constant but magnitude varies with time according to the relation f is equal to f0 to 1 minus t minus d square where f0 and t are constants the force acts only for the time interval 2t uh, okay the force acts only for the time interval 2t the velocity v of the particle after time 2t is okay see this is a question based on integration right? straightforward integration uh, those people who are uh, preparing for the GE mains, uh, this question is from GE mains anyway, uh, th you'll be very much familiar with integration because you're doing, anyway, you're preparing much detailed questions for integration in your uh, maths preparation. Uh, but otherwise, uh, I would suggest it's always better to understand the derivation in detail, uh, the solution in detail. And this time I write each, each and every steps in the detailed way so that you can understand if uh, you know if students are from other um, background who are not much into maths for them i'll write the detail steps give me a second for that okay so i have written um, possibly all the steps in, in much detail okay so we'll divide the steps in uh, the solution to two halves let's first discuss the first half so what is given to us f is equal to f0 to 1 minus t minus t the whole square by t square okay by t square now, we know that we've been asked to find out the velocity here. So, what is acceleration? Acceleration is force by mass. Now, we can write this as 1 by m into f. Why? Because what we have here is f, right? So, this much is f over here. So, what we'll do is we'll write this f. We'll replace f by f0 into 1 minus t minus 2 square by t square. Okay, so now this is acceleration. Now, why did I bring acceleration? Because we've been asked to find out velocity. And what is velocity? Acceleration can be written as dv by dt. So, now I can write that dv by dt is equal to f0 by m into 1 minus t minus to the whole square by t square. Now, I'll take dv on the LHS and I'll transpose dt to the RHS, which means dv is equal to f0 by m, both of which are constants, into 1 minus t minus t the whole square by t square dt. Okay, now it is given that the force is acting only for the time interval two t, which means the which means the low the upper limit for time time is two t, and obviously the lower limit would be zero. And the initial velocity it is starting at rest so for the initial velocity u is zero, and it will gradually attain the velocity v. So the lower limit is zero, upper limit is v. I hope to find out the limit is clear to you. Okay, now keeping this in mind. We'll integrate dv. What is integral of dv? It is v. Lower limit 0, upper limit v, f0 by m. Now look at the way I'm going to integrate here. So to, to avoid confusion and to avoid, uh, to, uh, to avoid, to decrease the chance of getting an error, I'll write capital T as x. Okay, so what did I do here? Replace, replace capital T as x. Why? Because it may be the case that you'll get confused with capital T and small t. So I don't want you guys to have that confusion. So to avoid that confusion, what we'll do is we'll replace T with X. Now comes the detailed part of, uh, part of the solution. Give me a minute. So we know the integral V, v okay. Uh, with dV is V, weighing from 0 to V. F0, M into 0 to 1 minus M X. Well, I've just borrowed the previous equation since I started afresh. Now what I'll do is, since there are two parts within this fraction, I'll just split this integral into two. So I'll splitting one integral into two, 0 to root t, 0 to root t. First will be for 1 dt. Second will be for t minus x the whole square by x. Okay, my bad, it's not x, it is x square. x square dt. Okay. Now what is integral of 1? Integral of 1 is, integral of 1 is t varying from 0 to root t. Now see, since x is a constant, since x is a constant, I can keep x square outside the integral so i'll write it as 1 by x square into integral 0 to t t minus x the whole square now which formula are we going to use here see what is integral x minus a the whole power n it is equal to x minus a the whole power n plus 1 the whole upon n plus 1 so using this formula what is integral of t minus x the whole square dt it is t minus x the whole 2 plus 1 by 2 plus 1 which is 3 by 3 okay so the next step, we'll substitute the limits. So upper limit is 2t. So t from 0 to 0 means 2t minus 0. Okay. Um, yeah, 2t minus 0. Then what we have is 1 by x squared into 
here i didn't substitute x because the the integral was almost well a minor mistake here it's not capital t it should be it should be small t right because we're integrating dt so we have small t okay now when you integrate small t what you get is upper limit is 2t so 2t minus lower limit is 0 minus 1 by x square into upper limit is 2t so t minus what is the variable the variable is t and what is the constant x is the constant so maybe for your clarity i can write here that is the thing that is the variable so t minus x has to be substituted t has to be substituted with 2t so t minus x becomes 2t minus x lower limit is 0 so t minus x becomes 0 minus x the whole cube the whole cube by 3 so f0 by m 2t minus 0 is 2t 1 by x square now i'll replace x square with so i'll replace i'll replace x square with t again x with t again so when we do that what we have is x square becomes 1 by t square 2t minus x becomes t 2t minus t the whole cube 0 minus t the whole cube which is 2t minus t is t cube 0 minus t is minus t the whole cube right and therefore what we get is f0 by m into 2t minus 1 by t square 2t minus t is t cube minus t the whole cube minus t the whole cube is minus t cube minus t cube into minus t cube okay let me i don't want to have a confusion here so it's t cube minus this becomes minus t cube so what is t cube minus t cube that actually becomes t cube t cube plus t cube which is 2t cube so 2t cube by t square is 2t by 3 2t minus 1 by 2t minus 3 i'll multiply 3 on numerator and denominators what is 60 by 3 60 minus 3t is 60 minus 3t is 40 and therefore v is equal to f0 by m into 40 by 3 a really lengthy derivation see uh, for you know when you put it for the exam point of view you don't write these many steps just to you know to try to make things very faster which is something very easily you can do so very simple integral but again uh, since many students may find this integration tough the first time they do it i've taken some time to detail it having said that let's move on to the next question which again is based on force and acceleration